Oh, good morning to you. Those of you that watch my channel will know that I'm frequently in graveyards of old churches. And um, today's particularly poignant, I suppose, for me because uh, I'm going to a funeral. And as I've also mentioned before previously, um, we had the death recently of our, our local news agent. Those of you in the UK, uh, in America, will know that the word news agent really is just, I suppose, a paper shop, a sweet shop, things where you can buy sundry things. Anyway, it's Jimmy's funeral today. And I thought about this whole business of funerals. And a thought crossed my mind. We all owe God a funeral. You may say that's a very funny thing to say. Well, if we look at the straight biblical truth of what I'm meaning by that statement, you'll understand. So uh, I'll shortly get back to the car, get out of the rain here, and um, I'll share with you. Well, before I get back to the car, I've just been thinking of different types of funerals. Everybody in this graveyard outside here, I'm just standing inside because it's raining, but um, everyone's had a different kind of death. Everybody's been mourned in different ways. Some have been sorely missed. I think some people will probably say, well, I'm glad to see the back of that person. I think whatever way you, you cut it, a funeral is really a sad affair. We can celebrate and pretend that we... Uh, are happy that the person's no longer in pain, that kind of thing. But um, the kind of death is important. And I suppose one of the most poignant things, really, for me, is uh, death by suicide. I used to be a Samaritan, as I've said before. In the UK, a Samaritan is uh, somebody who works for an organisation that helps people who are really on the brink, thinking about suicide, um, considering whether to take their own life and maybe they've even started to do it and they just get on the phone and they just want to talk to somebody. And um, in the end, of course, there's death and there's the funeral. Everybody gathers together uh, round the grave with solemn thoughts, knowing, of course, that you'll never see that person again. But um, what does it mean to us as Christians? And what does it mean for, um, for God to look down upon us at the time that we start to turn to dust? And of course, it involves many kinds of thoughts and um, considerations. You think about those that are left behind and what kind of an impression we've made upon them. So. Um, no further ado, I'll get back to the car and uh, I'm going to share something with you. Well, I'm back in the car and uh, it's really starting to get heavy outside here. Actually, uh, I hope it does dry up because uh, they're going to have a cortege at this funeral that I was just talking about. They're going to walk the coffin from uh, the newsagent shop where Jimmy worked up to the church, which is possibly about a quarter of a mile. So... Um, have to get the umbrella out. Anyway, Colossians chapter 3 and uh, from verse 5 I'd like to read to you. First before I do that, this whole issue of suicide. I think the death that God is looking for in us is a suicidal death. And uh, I say it simply because of what the scripture says here. And here it says in verse 5, Colossians 3. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways, in the life you once lived. But now you must rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed 
in the knowledge and the image of its creator. Here there is no Greek or Jew, circumcision or uncircumcised, sorry, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. And it goes on to talk about the peace of Christ. Of course, once we've done that, then we've got the peace of Christ in us. And it's this putting to death that I want to emphasize this morning. And I, I speak it to myself first because it's so easy, isn't it? We wake up in the morning and things just rise up inside us. All the things from yesterday come into today. And that's really where anxiety and depression start, I think. It's because of all the yesterdays that we've had that we haven't put to death. We haven't allowed God to take hold of our, our inner being, our soul, as that area of our life, that mind, that will, that emotion. And we've walked in the consequences of that. And all these things that are mentioned here in Colossians are simply consequences of not having that funeral for your old nature. And a funeral is to put off the body, isn't it? Death is to put off the body. The soul separates from the body, the, ground, the body goes into the ground or gets burnt, and that's it, it's discarded. And then we're told to put on this new nature. And it's interesting, isn't it, that um, we have now the power within us to put on a new nature, to bring to life something that was dead or something that didn't exist before and it's the life of Christ in us the words put to death it's an act that we do isn't it it's something that is supposed to be final in our lives yes, yes it's an ongoing process of course it's an ongoing process but we are living in that finality because we have the nature of Christ in us we can walk in his, in his power and in his spirit. And it's letting go of ourselves. I don't know whether Jimmy was a Christian or not. I think that's the sad thing about going to a funeral, really, is that um, only God knows the heart of a man. We know, of course, if certain people are abundantly wicked and all they've ever done is wickedness, we... We sometimes have that sense, well, how could they have repented? But only God knows. The important thing is, is here, for me, is the putting on of the new self. Every time yesterday's thoughts come back, it's putting to death of those thoughts. And sometimes it just is not easy. Because we want to hold on to it. We want to turn it round in our minds. Yesterday's scenario, how are we going to change what happened yesterday? Well, we can't. Today's a new day. It's the first of a new month as well, the first of a new season. Summer is, is coming to an end. We're now about to go into the darker days. And it's the darker days for the world as well. Those of you will know that follow the channel know that I've produced a new gospel tract which in fact I will be putting the link to in every, now, in every one of these videos from now on. So in the description box, if you click onto the description box, you'll often see it comes up on YouTube and it says more, and then you'll come into the description box and you'll find the link in blue there to um, the new tract that I've written. And um, there's an urgency about sharing the gospel now in these days. There's an urgency for change. We know the world is, is changing rapidly, it's accelerating toward that stage setting of the coming of the man of sin. And in a way I'm, I'm sad to some extent because I see that as we 
are approaching these days and it's, it's becoming clearer and clearer that we're in we're certainly running headlong into them that many people are uh, are not looking that way at all they're not looking in the direction of the coming of the Lord and that for me is all the more reason to put to death my, my earthly nature to put to death those things that hinder me from following the Lord especially in these last days because so many things are going to trouble us and they're going to come against us but we're going to need his power more and more as the days go on so let's give God a funeral a suicidal um, act of putting to death that old nature putting Stuart to death and bringing Jesus to life May the Lord help us in every aspect of our lives to do that. And as it says there, forgiving one another, walking on. Not an easy path. And that too in itself can be a tribulation. The tribulation of dealing with ourselves. At the same time, knowing that the Lord is returning and that he's going to bring glory with him and we're going to be clothed with it have a good day have a blessed day